Hello again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider here with a little bit of a vlog video for you. Now, recently I was tagged in a video by Crochetin with Alana. And it's one of those sort of 20 question, actually, this is 23 questions, um, you know, a QA, &A, get to know me. And now this one is specifically. 23 non-yarny things about me. Hmm. And I do want to thank Alana for tagging me. These are a lot of fun. And I've done this sort of thing before, but answers change. So you know what? Let's start, shall we? And at the end, I'm going to tag some people as well. I've got a, a short list of YouTubers that I'm going to tag. So watch till the end. All right. So first question is favorite color well that's kind of tricky i mean if i this is going to be a long video <laughs> um i like a color set i like earth tones i like anything autumnal um but if i had to narrow it down to just one it would be green if i had to narrow down the green into a specific green it would be either like a moss or an olive, probably a moss green. That's, if I had to narrow it down, I think that that's what I would narrow it down to. But I mean, I love mustard and uh, eggplant and rust and pumpkin. I love those colors very, very much. Um, but okay, fine. We'll, we'll say moss green if I have to narrow it down. Okay. And that's, and now this, that's not necessarily yarny, not necessarily. I mean, it's a color. It's not a yarn. All right. Favorite genre of music. That too is tricky. Um, I grew up in the eighties and I didn't really start getting into music until I would say I was in my early teens, like most of us do. So nineties music, um, However, the sort of inner nostalgic lover of me, I love big band and swing very much. You know, uh, Glenn Miller, the Andrews sisters, I love that style of music. I can't dance at all. Uh, see, I had two left feet, but I loaned them to somebody else. And no, I, I cannot dance at all. Maybe a, a, a two-step slow dance, maybe, but that's it. And guess what? You ain't never going to see it. So mm. anyway, number three, favorite food. Well, that that's hard. That That's tricky. Um, I think I could perhaps narrow it down to sushi and pasta. I love both. Um, sushi because for me it's not often pasta because it's so easy and so filling and depending upon how you make it is darn inexpensive if I really want a treat I will go with sushi speaking of sushi um, for the longest time we're talking years I haven't had sushi because I would only have it if I went out to a restaurant uh, and I haven't been out to a restaurant since 2019. It's now 2022. Um, uh, I would get it takeout or delivery, but the place that I would get from kept messing up the order, so I haven't gotten from them for a couple of years now. So I started actually making my own sushi, hmm. and I'm I'm practicing. Okay, I'm practicing. I may actually do a video on how to make sushi rolls. It could happen. Will it happen? I would like for it to happen, but I digress at any rate. But yeah, pasta. Oh, I love pasta. Mm. Okay. Favorite soda or pop? That depends on your 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 geography and your, you know, where, where you're from, whether you refer to it as soda or pop, regardless, Dr. Pepper. Mm, yes, it's for me, it's like this wonderful hybrid combination of a root beer and a cherry Coke. And I, I love it. 
absolutely. They have a really nice cream soda version of it as well, but just regular old Dr. Pepper, I'm hunky-dory. Mm. Okay, next up, number five, favorite animal. That too is really, really difficult. Um, <clears throat> now, for the longest time when I was, let's see, senior year of high school and all through college, my nickname was Ducky, D-U-C-K-Y, Ducky. And actually that was in reference to the movie Pretty in Pink, um, because believe it or not, back in the day I had big hair and very vibrant red suede shoes. Don't ask me why. Um... And, uh, so I had a thing for ducks actually, um, you know, whether it was rubber ducks or just anything duck oriented. Um, but also I love rabbits very, very, very much. Uh, I think that perhaps stems back even further to my absolute love of Alice in Wonderland and of course the white rabbit, um, also, if I were ever to domesticate any animals myself and have them as pets, I would love rabbits because who wouldn't like to have their own little pets slash fiber factory living with them? Um, because even though it's been a long time since I've done any spinning of yarn, that would be absolutely awesome. And I... I just, I love, I love the little bunnies. I love them. They're so cute and quiet and granted they are extremely timid, generally speaking, but they're just so, they're little fluffies, you know, I, I love bunnies. <laughs> I do. All right. Um, number six, favorite holiday. Well, I would say Halloween. I mean, I generally don't celebrate holidays per se. Um, uh, I mean, just recently we had Easter. I had some Easter candy, um, but I'm not, I'm not at all religious or anything. Um, Christmas is fun. Who doesn't like the presents, both giving as well as receiving? That's nice too. Um, I think Halloween, predominantly because I love horror movies. And whether you're going through a streaming service or you're looking on TV, that entire month, it's all horror movies on TV. I love that genre, whether it's vampires or zombies or what have you. Absolutely love, love, love that time of year for that reason. And also because it's the fall and the two are like this. And the fall is, of course, my favorite season. Um, which I think is another question further down. At any rate, let us proceed, shall we? All right, so question number seven. Now, this, this is another tricky, tricky one. So what is your favorite book or series of books? That's hard. I've been a book lover and bibliophile since I was an itty-bitty little spider. Um... Well, at the moment, actually, at the moment, I am currently rereading, I do love rereading books, I'm rereading the series called The Borrowers. Love it. It's by Mary Norton. And actually, at the moment, I am on book number two, and it is The Borrowers Afield by Mary Norton. And so you can see them there. They are a family of three, and they are sheltered from the rain inside of a boot. Now, the focus is a little funky, but yeah. So you've got Arietti, Homily, and Pod, and so it's a family of three, and it's their adventures being itty-bitty, trying to survive and make it in the world, and it is a great series. Can't recommend it enough. There are five books in total, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's The Borrowers, The Borrowers Afield, Afloat, Aloft, and Avenged, if I'm not mistaken. And it's it's great. I mean, granted, it's a children's series, but it's really well written. And I would say it's, you know, 
not even for small children. I want to say maybe like 10 plus. I love those books because it's a great way for me to just unwind and enjoy a good story. Very much so. Also, uh, as far as other series, uh, the Red Wall series by Brian Jakes, really good stuff. Still haven't finished it yet, but then again, it's like 20 something odd books. I think I'm on like book five or so, roughly speaking. It's it's a wonderful sort of fantasy genre with uh, anthropomorphized animals uh, in the Middle Ages, if you will. Good stuff. And of course, the books by Beverly Cleary, the Ramona Quimby books. R Ramona Quimby, she's such a character. And each book is her after another year of her life, starting with her as a preschooler, and then her going to kindergarten, and first, second, third, fourth, you know, etc. you know, those grades, and her little misadventures of trying to deal with, you know, being the, the little sister of the family, and it's cute, okay? They're good books. They're very, very good books. Um, and I grew up with them, and I can't recommend them enough. So, Next, favorite pizza topping. Offhand, meatball. I love meatball. Pepperoni, to me, that's a generic answer, uh, but I don't like how there's all the greasy, oily bits, you know, going on with pepperoni. Mushroom is good, too. I'll even have anchovies. There are just a few toppings that, mm -mm, no. Uh, pineapple, no. I'm sorry. Some of you are probably going to hate me, but pineapple on pizza. No, pineapple is a dessert. I don't even like pineapple on a, a, a baked ham. No. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, so pineapple, eh. uh, olives, <clears throat> no, no, I like olive oil. I just don't like olives. Um, you know, same thing goes with capers. There's just something funky about them. No, mm -mm. no. At any rate, uh, so meatball. Yeah, I like meatball. Okay, favorite pastime. Now, because this is, you know, non-yarny things about me, I would say it would probably be one of two things. First, I would say reading. I absolutely love to read. Um, I think I started when I was maybe three or four or thereabouts. Like I, I, I started early, um, you know, definitely before I started school. Um, you know, I, I love books. Um, you know, my mom could probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I think it maybe was about three years old, roughly. Um, so reading definitely, because also it's a great way for me to wind down after the day, and I can just lay in bed with a good book right now, borrowers, um, and just sort of decompress. Um, second, I would say playing video games. Um, absolutely love it. I've uh, been playing video games ever since I was a kid, and that is, of course, why I have my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. It's a lot of fun you know, and uh, I post on that channel every day. Yes, I cycle through right now about five different video games, uh, you know, go through the cycle and then come back around full circle. And I just, you know, I had fun with it. Yeah. So first reading, second video games, but the vast, vast, vast majority of my time is crocheting, but this is a non-yarny questionnaire. So I respect that. Okay. Next up, favorite TV series. Again, that's tricky. Offhand, I would say Stranger Things. Love that show. Can't wait for the new season, season four to come out. Very much excited about that. Um, the Twilight Zone. Oh, Rod Serling. Laverne and Shirley. Oh, Yes, we're going to do it. Shlemiel Shlemazel, Hassan Pfeffer Incorporated, The Honeymooners. There's so many really good ones. Some contemporary, some classic. Um, 
couple of other good ones. Mind Hunter, that was really good. These days, a lot of the, you know, TV that I watch, it's a series that's usually on Netflix because I don't actually watch TV per se anymore. Um, but uh, Squid Game, that was really, really good. Uh, it's, I would say it's more of a series than a TV show, but uh, that was good. Um, Alice in Borderland, not as good as Squid Game, but that one was pretty good too. Um, oh, uh, was it the, I think it was the, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, not Sabrina the Teenage Witch with uh, Melissa Joan Hart. No, not that cute and light and fluffy one. No, the one on Netflix. That was a really good series. Um, Hmm. Trying to think of what else. I I I don't actually watch TV. For me, it's either Amazon Prime, Netflix, or YouTube. That's that's it. That's all I watch. You know, and the occasional disc, a uh, Blu-ray or DVD. But otherwise, no. That that's all I watch. Um, so at any rate, um, but uh, Stranger Things. Ah, oh, I can't wait can't can't wait um at any rate onwards and upwards to number 11 Alrighty, so number 11 favorite fruit now depending upon semantics tomato you know i mean some people think of a tomato as a fruit some people as a vegetable if you want to say it's a fruit definitely tomato love tomatoes raw, cooked, just not really stewed, but absolutely love them. Um, uh, then favorite vegetable, potato. Hands down, I even wrote it in all caps, potato. Um, whether they are mashed or fried or baked or made into gnocchi, whatever, I love potatoes. More, more, more. <laughs> hash browns, whatever. Seriously, they are my favorite. Um, I could probably eat them every day and not get tired of them. Um, now, if you want to be, you know, if you want to disagree with my interpret interpretation of tomato, okay. Uh, then what would be, what would be my favorite fruit after that? Uh, strawberries, those are really good. I mean, berries in general are really, really good. Um, we'll say strawberries. You know, I mean, bananas are cool too, um, but I'm not a tremendous fruit eating person. Um, but, you know, let's just say tomato. Okay. Number 13, favorite subject in school. Well, that's a toss up. I would say between English and art. Toss up. Um, you know, uh, as far as college is concerned, I took a lot of, you know, both of those classes because I have a, uh, a degree in English and, you know, it just follows suit with, uh, you know, my, my love of reading and my love of books. Um, at one point, I wanted to be a, an English teacher. Didn't, didn't quite pan out that way. Uh, at one point, I wanted to go into library sciences and become a librarian. That didn't pan out either. So right now, I just like to read books. <laughs> um, as far as art, uh, in elementary school, we had the best art teacher. Her name was Mrs. Flaherty, and she looked like an art teacher. Um, she would take her pants and dye one pant leg one color and the other pant leg the other color. Her shoes were never matched. Um, she would paint all sorts of crazy things all over her fingernails, flowers and animals and all sorts of things, and her hair was, I want to say, maybe four or five feet long. Um, she was so colorful and just, just her makeup alone. Whoa. 
granted it was the eighties, you know, um, but she was very inspirational. Definitely. She was so encouraging and so inspirational. Love her. Um, but, uh, you know, I continued on with my interest in art. Uh, I did, I used to do a lot of drawing, a lot of painting, uh, sculpture, photography, all sorts of things. Um, but as far as stitching, I didn't get into that until I was in my early twenties. Um, so English and art that that's the long answer. Okay. So favorite actor or actress? Well, favorite actor, Vincent Price. Ah, oh, so dapper, such a gentleman, and yet was in so many great, so bad that they're good horror movies. Love Vincent Price. If I could have tea with anybody, give me a crumpet and a cup of, you know, English breakfast, and I'm happy as a clam. You know, just sit right down with him and, and discuss, you know, whatnot over watercress sandwiches. You know, I, he's, he's such a lovely, lovely character. Love him. Um, if I also have to pick actress, well, I don't know. Maybe Betty Davis, you know, I mean, granted, she played a lot of very cantankerous characters, but I mean, she was awesome. Um, good question. I mean, I'm Vincent Price, though. Love him. Hands down. Um, favorite singer. Well, that, that too is kind of tricky. I mean, there are so many that I really do like, um, you know, lately, to be honest, lately, I've been listening to a lot of Gary Newman. Um, it's very, very 1980s synthesized kind of music. Um, Down in the Park, Our Friends Electric, Me, um, great, great music. I only recently got into it. Um, otherwise I would say maybe David Bowie or, uh, David Byrne from Talking Heads, um, Tom York from Radiohead, um, Billie Holiday, again, the Andrews sisters, um, Annie Lennox. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely her. I mean, you know, such powerful voices and personalities. Um, you know, that's just to name a few. Um, favorite superhero. Tricky. Very, very tricky. Now, I would say it would depend on if you're talking about strictly from the comic books or if you're talking about from you know, movie depictions and so forth, you know, um, you know, I mean, if you're talking about, um, you know, actors and actresses playing the characters, um, I mean, I don't recall the actor's name, but, uh, the gentleman who plays Aquaman, enough said, um, Anyway, um, but I would say bef before that, though, Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Yep. From the movie Batman Returns, um, why is her name escaping me all of a sudden? Um, but I, I even remember the, you know, her, you know, real name in that was Selena Kyle, if I'm not mistaken. Um and it's after she was killed by her boss. Sorry, I'm spoiling. Um, and she gets home and she just goes completely off the deep end and she trashes her apartment beyond belief. And then what does she do? She goes through all of her, her you know, crafting supplies and she 
sets down at the sewing machine and with this really crazed look on her face, she starts stitching together her Catwoman outfit. I can relate. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, just, just, I don't know. Um, I mean, she's, she's not quite a superhero. I wouldn't say she's a villain either. Um, I would say she's sort of an anti-hero, if she will. She is her own hero. Okay. How about that? Um, and, uh, she's, she's nimble, you know, she, she does her own thing. Um, she's not exactly law abiding, but you know, she's fighting, she's fighting for herself. She's sticking up for herself. I give her credit for that. At any rate. <laughs> All right. So I just looked it up. I was right when, it, when I said Selena Kyle and it was Michelle Pfeiffer that played Catwoman in that role. Absolutely loved her. So onwards to number 17. Favorite comedian, Peter Sellers. Hands down, Peter Sellers. Love him and so many of his movies. I think he was an absolute genius when it comes to physical comedy. Um, now, from what I understand from a biopic that I saw of him called The Life and Death of Peter Sellers, he was not a nice man. But as far as his work is concerned, I thought absolutely brilliant. Everything from his work in the Pink Panther movies to Lolita, Dr. Strangelove, being there, the party, I mean, murder by death. I mean, he was just so versatile. And he was never in a direct pigeonhole. Oh, the life, no, sorry, the, the world of Henry Orient. He was in that too with Angela Lansbury. Um, so many of my favorite movies he was in. Um, he was never pigeonholed into a very specific typecast, you know, character. Even race didn't have any hampering effect on his ability because, you know, in the party, he played, uh, you know, somebody from India in uh, Murder by Death, played somebody who was Asian, um, you know, in the Pink Panther movies, Frenchman, you know, I mean, remarkable actor. Second up, I would say perhaps Rowan Atkinson, better known as Mr. Bean. Again, a genius of physical comedy. Uh, the ability to do so much without saying a word. Incredible. So yes, those, those are right up there as far as my favorites, um, my, my favorite funny men. Okay, favorite season. That's number 18, the fall. I love the autumn. What can I say? Close second, the spring. Not a fan of the hot, 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 or the cold, cold, cold. Um, you know, if I had to put them in order in which I would like them, I love the fall, then I love the spring, then the winter, then the summer. Summer last. Um, because when it's cold, you can put more layers on. But when it's really, really hot, you can only take so many layers off, you know. Um, you know, and it's easier to keep yourself warm than to cool yourself off. You know, and also the fact that I'm a crocheter. You know, I, this is not a yarny thing, but because I'm a crocheter, I can make things that will help keep me warm. So it's kind of a win-win at any rate. Favorite movie. That's another tough one. Um, first thing that comes to mind, even though I haven't watched it in a while, Night of the Living Dead. The original 1968 classic, absolutely one of the greatest. Um, as far as other movies that I really enjoy... Alice in Wonderland, um, that's, you know, yeah, pick a version of that movie, seriously. Um, I mean, I, I must have seen like at least 10 different versions. Uh, ironically, the Johnny Depp version, you know, Tim Burton, visually it was good. The rest of it, hogwash, didn't care for it. Um, you know, as much as I love Johnny Depp and uh, was it Helena Bonham Carter, love them. 
but it had nothing to do with the book. Um, the Disney version, um, Through the Looking Glass, I mean, so many really, really good adaptations of that. Uh, and then there were none. Such a good one. We're talking the 1940s one. BBC did one in the late 2000s, I think it was. That one was really good too. Um, but the original 1940s and then there were none. Good stuff. Um, mm, trying to think of what else. You know, I mean, other horror movies, you know, Alien, Poltergeist, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, great stuff, you know. Um, Blade Runner. Mm, so good. The sequel, I only saw that recently. It was like, eh, but the original one. Love that movie. Okay. Number 20. Favorite smell. Sandalwood. Hands down, bar none, sandalwood. Love it. My favorite scent. Uh, I would say perhaps a runner up to that would be uh, maybe patchouli uh, or sage, uh, clove. But sandalwood, definitely my fave. Mm. Um, number 21, my best friend, Russ. <laughs> definitely. Um, actually, Russ, uh, I met through my channel. Yes. Um, one day he sent me a message and we just started kibitzing back and forth. And actually, we text each other every day. Um, and we've known each other now for, gosh, I want to say maybe five years or so. And never, never met in person, but, you know, we, you know, chit chat and, you know, spend time on the phone and we talk projects and all sorts of stuff. And he's, he's a good friend. And he's also extremely generous and very wise in the ways of yarn and stitching and so forth. So love you, Russ. <laughs> um, oh, favorite decade. That's another tricky one. That is a tricky one. What is my favorite decade? Hmm. Well, for my favorite decade, I mean, I've always been fascinated with the Victorian age, which would be the 1880s. However, um, I mean, as far as an age that I would want to live in, that's more complicated. You know, you know the expression, it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. That holds true. Um, the 1880s was only good if you were, you know, I'm talking 1880s in England, um, it was only a good time to live if you were of, you know, the, the able class, if you had enough money to survive because poverty, it's like either you were up or you were down. There really wasn't much wiggle room in the middle. Um, you know, I mean, if you read any of Charles Dickens books, um, yeah, you were either pretty much, you were poor or you were rich. That's it. Um, but I mean, as far as the, uh, the environment and like, for instance, take Sweeney Todd. Okay. Just as an example, take Sweeney Todd, either, you know, you know, you were a, you, you were in one of Mrs. Lovett's pies or you were the barrister who was, you know, living, living the large life, you know, it was one or the other. Um, so it would be a fun place to visit. I wouldn't want to live there. Um, I mean, also the the 40s and the 50s, you know, the sort of the Donna Reed uh, Mickey Mouse Club age, if you will, um, where it was, you know, things were simpler back then. You know, I mean, I loved the the cars and the the home designs and the home decor and so forth. Love that stuff. And the music. Um or the 1960s, Woodstock, you know, the summer of love, um, you know, free thinking and rebellion and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, the thing is, is that would I want to live back then? Probably not. Um, I mean, granted, our 
where we are currently as a society, my first and foremost thought is, you know, not what kind of car or what kind of couch I would have, but civil rights, okay? Um, you know, back in the aforementioned decades that I had mentioned, yeah, I would have a lot of problems if I lived in either of those ages. Um, so I wouldn't want to live back then, just, just from a stance of personal civil rights. Um, right now, I mean, things are very tumultuous, but at least to an extent, by law, I am protected, you know, as a person. So I wouldn't want to give that up. So I think I'll stick, I'll, I'll stick where I am for now. Um, and last but not least, number 23, my favorite YouTube channel. And it's not Yarny, actually. Um, it is Evan and Caitlin Gaming Uncut. Love that channel. Evan and Caitlin, actually, they, I've talked about them a couple of times in some of my videos. They are a painfully cute couple. Um, they're, they, they are married and Evan is, he's hysterical. Caitlin, she's adorable. And the two of them, I first saw them, they have a YouTube channel where they do crafting, you know, nothing specific. Sometimes they do a lot of work with, uh, resin, sometimes woodworking, um, you know, a lot of DIY crafts and that sort of thing. That's what attracted me to them initially, but also they do have a video game channel as well. And they are a riot, absolutely. And also it's really nice and refreshing to see that they are, I would say, 98% wholesome as well. And that's one of the things that I aspire to do and be, as far as my video game channel, to keep it where it's family friendly. I mean, Granted, some of the games that I play are not family friendly, but my commentary is family friendly. And that's what I try to keep in mind. Um, I do watch, you know, a fair number of other gaming YouTubers as well, but some of them, they, the language is a bit much at times as if a truck driver had Tourette's, um, no offense to people that have Tourette's or are truck drivers, but that's sort of, you know, vulgar language. I try to steer clear of that. Um, but Evan and Caitlin Gaming Uncut, absolutely a wonderful channel. The only objection that I have is I just wish that they would post more often. I would say on average, it's once a week or so. However, um, because they stream their videos first, and then they post it to YouTube, sometimes the videos are anywhere from like an hour and a half to like three hours long. And I look forward to those days because they're a lot of fun to watch. At any rate. <laughs> All right, so that is 23 non-yarny things about me. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, always fun to do these sort of vlog type videos, you know, and again, I would really like to thank uh, Alana for tagging me in the video. Now, I am tagging some peoples. Now, I have a bit of a list here of channels that I'm going to be tagging. Um, if I don't say your name, you know, you know what? Consider yourself tagged. <laughs> so I'm going to run through these. Crystal at Bag o Day. Rose from Rose Likes Crochet, Deb from The Canadian Crotcheter, Nichecraft, Inaya's Toy Box Crochet, Linda Just a Crochet Sister, Fuad Azmat, Yarn Utopia by Nadia, The Secret Yarnery, The Crochet Witch, The Crafty Goddess, Urban Yarn, and Ladybird Loves. All right. So again, if I didn't say your name, please don't take it now personally or anything like that. Uh, it's so hard to keep track of absolutely everybody. Um, but yeah, if I didn't call your name, please consider yourself tagged. If I did call your name, you've been tagged. If you've already done the video, consider yourself free and clear. <laughs> so 
Again, thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned because, you know, this weekend I've got a really fun project lined up. Um, not sure which project I'm going to be doing this weekend, but they're all, they're all fun to me. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.